last week uh, was the first full trading week in the new month of July, and there was a major rout around the world. The global markets lost more than 500 billion U.S. dollars. So that's the story early today. More than 500 billion U.S. dollars last week across very many regions, including uh, sub-Saharan Africa, as investors digest geopolitics, including economic data and clawbacks on profit after a major rally in the first six months of 2017. So how did we stack up in the global market space last week? Let's start with the stock exchange, the Nigerian stock market, where we lost about 2%. Uh, that's already uh, in the news. No thanks to uh, the banking uh, sector and, of course, the uh, consumer goods and the oil and gas sectors. Last week, the market was down massively. We lost the 33,000 to 32,459.17. And the market cap, uh, 1.187 uh, trillion naira. Quite an interesting uh, trading week. In volume terms, quite a bit of uh, lackluster. 1.061 for five trading days. That's quite little. For naira value, 12. 295 billion local currency in less than 20,000 transactions. And if you take a look at the, uh, across the uh, sectors, I just uh, uh, tipped that off earlier. Uh, you can see banking and consumer goods in the red territory. The industrial goods managed uh, to finish in the green 0.22%. Insurance was up surprisingly 1.10%. And you have the oil and gas down 1%, one percent, one point three quarter of a percent when we close off on Friday. That's where the markets will be started uh, today. A bit of a conversation on that uh, in the next uh, a minute or two. Stick around. Let's uh, take you through the fixed income market. A bit of a lackluster Friday on the at the FMDQ OTC Securities Exchange for Treasury bills and FGN narrow bond uh, on the market. Take a look as we bring up the numbers for you. Let's start with uh, the FGN bonds. And you can see uh, a very, very tepid Friday among those mid-term papers between 2024, uh, 2020, 2024, 2027, and 2036. Those are the four most actively traded FGN bond uh, papers. Uh, take a, a flip and look at the uh, summary. That's 7.52 billion naira. If you take that out and bring in the Treasury bills, not significantly different on Friday after the uh, central bank uh, repaid some Treasury bills on Thursday and mopped up massively across the market. So there's a bit of a liquidity. And of course, the central bank also threw in its own FX uh, auction as well. So that was a bit of a uh, knock-on effect at the Treasury's window, second window that is, and that gives you just about $20.67 billion. Uh, Naira. Let's uh, uh, squeeze in uh, a few minutes of conversations with Rutimi Fakaejo, who is a trader and CEO at uh, Enterprise Stockbrokers this morning to uh, raise the curtain for us for uh, this brand new trading week. Rutimi, good morning. Thanks for coming through on the show. Good morning, Bolton. It's good to see you. Uh, taking a cue from where we finished off last week, what are your thoughts as far as this new trading week is concerned? Uh, well, to me, I I, in them, I believe that it is much better than what we saw last week. I have a value of two down days, and uh, the remaining three days, in an, on an incremental basis, we saw the OSHA um, index moving up. And I think uh, having finished positive on Friday, and uh, with the uh, pending, um, with the expectation of uh, uh, auditor report for some companies, and also unaudited for some others, I believe that um, th that expectation is definitely going to create a lot of uh, activities on the floor and also drive the market. If you're looking at uh, our earnings, I'm sure that's one thing that everyone looks to be interested in as we speak now of what the uh, second quarter and the first half will look like. Uh, give us your sentiments. Where do you think some of the sentiments are? Do you think a Q2 will be a mirror of first quarter in particular for the banks where they, there was a surprise to the upside for the banks that, that reported in Q1? Yes, to me, I believe that uh, the, definitely we're going to we most likely see better results uh, than what we saw in the first quarter. 
uh, for the banking sector stocks and also for the uh, manufacturing. Uh, more so for the fact that uh, everybody has gotten over the euphoria of the foreign exchange transmission uh, losses. And I believe that um, with the new trend everybody that everyone has gotten accustomed to, it definitely will imply better uh, profit for the uh, various companies. So I expect that the figures will be much better than what we saw in the first quarter. Uh, take us out of the banking sector today. What do you think the reading of the market will look like? 1.99% last week. How do you think we're starting off the trading week? Uh, well, we, we're still in open session right now. Uh, we're yet to enter into continuous, continuous trading. Uh, but with the way it is, with the kind of offers, with the kind of bids, and uh, with the prices being uh, offered and bidded, I believe that uh, things definitely are looking up, at least with the way it stands right now. So maybe at the end of the day, for the banking sector stock, we're able to see yours at least uh, so make no gainers with today's transaction among the banking sector stocks. Rotin Mifakaijo, thank you very much uh, for coming through on the program and raising the curtain for us to start a brand new uh, trading week from enterprise uh, stockbrokers. Uh, very quickly, what do we have from where we finished off last week? But this is, of course, news coming through from the stock exchange. Coronation Asset Management is today rolling out a public offering of three different mutual funds. Uh, it's rolling out 400 million units of is what you call an IPO or fixed income fund. That is number one. Number two, the Coronation Money Market Fund. That's also opening today. 1.5 billion uh, units on offer. And finally, the Balance Fund, which is 200 million units. The three mutual funds are opening today, July 10th. And that is the first set of offerings we're seeing in the market in the new month of July and in the third quarter. Meantime, Stambic IBTC last week cancelled its Stambic IBTC ETF 30 on the market on the stock exchange, that was the balance was 6.758 million, while the outstanding units after the cancellation was 6.475 million units of the ETF, or what's called the exchange traded funds. So let us sink in. Let's come back after the break. We've got a lot to talk about in Nigeria's oil and gas and the electricity sector. If there's any options that the market can take, or the power sector can take from the market, let's come back and talk balance. <laughs>